if everyone can turn their video off. Recording is on. Um, so, um, I, I was, um, so I've sort of, I sort of done a talk like this before, and what what happened was that um, I, I massively ran out of time because I realised that there is uh, there's uh, there's just a lot of detail in in this topic, um, and I tried to cover tried to cover too much, and it didn't work. So this session, um, I thought we'd do more as a more as a Q&A so that I don't go off for ages on something that people aren't actually that interested in or don't have questions on. Um, and um, yeah, um, and I've, but I've got my, I've got my slides from the, that I prepared from my previous talk to hand so that I can uh, hopefully, you know, use those to, to give answers to, to the questions that people are are asking, um, yeah. So, email email deliverability is is the, it, it's about getting your email into people's inboxes, isn't it? And what people don't tend to understand is like I have. So I have got several clients. Um, who use Civi Mail and um, and they need uh, um, and then they might use a third party to uh, like an SMTP server um, to send to get their mail sent and then they're like oh my my emails are going to spam or my we're getting a high bounce rate or things like this and something's wrong can you fix it and um, and the, the frustrating answer is is no, actually. <laughs> um, I often can't fix it um, because that's the way because that's the way email works. Um, so it's the there are various things that you can do to improve your chances, um, but they are varied and um, and and what. Yeah, and it, you know, you might end up having to do a lot of work in figuring out exactly what what the problem is. Um, so there's there's the technical setup. There's things that are going on on, on the internet at the time, um, and that means your your IP neighbourhood. Um, of either your IP or the IP of the SMTP service that you're using. Um, there's your the reputation of that over over time, um, and there's um, and there's also as I said, what's going on on the internet. What I mean by that is that if there's a spam comes in waves, like the spammers sort of they they dream up new ways to sort of spam people and then when they get a good idea uh they they just go all, all out and and send lots of spam um and at those peaks of spam all of these self-adjusting ai driven spam detection things will will suddenly go oh what? so much spam right i'm going to be really harsh on everything coming in and so your email that hopefully isn't spam um suddenly gets considered to be spam um, and uh, and then Civi so might it might so you might get a hard bounce back saying well, I've been told your spam uh, that, that from this email address and Civi so might put that email on hold and you'll never email them again unless you deal with that unless you review it yourself um, the content of your mail can make a difference as well you know if you're if you're sending so if your if your content is quite spammy, then well, sorry, not spammy, but if you're yeah, spammy. Like <laughs> if you um, if you're talking about free offers, or if you're talking about um, uh, healthcare, or if any of the things that spammers will typically include, then then that's going to that's going to count against you. Um, and there are services you can use to check your the spamminess of your 
of your email before you send it. Um, there's a service called mailtester.com, something like that. I'll, I'll put the link in the chat. Um, and you can send the email that you intend to send to a special email address, and then you can review. Um, it'll it'll tell, give you a score out of 10 as to sort of how trustworthy it, it thinks that's going to be. That's just using its own spam assassin, but that is what a lot of people use, uh, a lot of uh, email account providing companies use. Um, of course, the big ones like um, Google and Yahoo and we're a lot of people in the UK, so we have um, BT Internet, who are the, the worst of the worst. Um, all of those, they'll use their own systems, and Microsoft are terrible as well, and they'll, they've got their own system that they can't even control. So, um, so you're up against you're up against a lot, really, getting getting your getting your email through. Um, there. Um, so um, I don't want to, what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask for questions because otherwise I'm in danger of rambling on and filling up lots of time and then uh, I'm boring people because some there's quite a lot of boring stuff about email. Um, so it's important, but it's not boring if it affects you. So I'd rather hear from people about, um, uh, about, about with questions, and then I'll, I'll I'll see if I can explain. So you know, if you if you're like, oh, I've heard of DMARC and DKIM and SPF and things. What what do I need to know about that? Then I can go into that. But um, I don't want to go into all of that stuff um, now because I, I'll just fill the time up with 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 things that you might already know or might not need to know. Um, and um, yes. Uh, some questions that William sent me in advance, um, which we can cover, is um, what's the difference between bounce and block? How to stop mail going to spam? I've sort of explained why that's hard, and I can go into detail on any of the any of those um, pieces, moving pieces. Um, and how important is the is the the company you're using if you're not doing it yourself? Um, sending SMTP and how do you choose how do you choose a good one is a, is a question so I'll put those out there and if uh, if people want to turn on their mic and go yes I want to know that then um, I'll, I'll talk about that for a bit and um, and then uh, let me get the chat open oh well, here you go um, I was also, also going to say that there's um, a shared Google document. I posted the link in the chat, and there's yeah, okay. a few questions in there that people have added. Okay, fab. Let me just get that open. Sorry about that. See that. Right. Okay. Um, how to set up an inbox to capture details for automatic replies or out of office responses to bulk email as well as undeliverable emails. We get undeliverables for traditional email and system messages. It would be useful to see these, and I know there is a way, but I haven't got around to knowing how easy it is to configure. Okay, so when when Civi sends, um, so yes, there's, there's, two, there's two sorts of, um, two sorts of types of email. There's transactional email, which is, um, here's the receipt for this thing that you just bought. And there's um, there's bulk email, which is anything CV mail sends, basically. Um, when in the CV app, um, in, the, in the UI, you'll, you, you'll see like traditional or mosaico. That stuff doesn't so much matter. Um, um, yeah, but but what matters is is whether it's sent by CV mail or whether it's a one-off, a one-off mailing. Um, for for CV, all all mail sent from CV mail um, has a special um, a special return address. So when email is sent, um, there's there's two. Well, there's there's, sort of, there's a few. There's a bunch of addresses, email addresses that are used within each email. Um, one is called the return path, and that's the email address that might not be a real email address, um, 
to which bounces will be sent. So if, if something bounces um, uh, after the point of it having been received, um, then that's the email address that will, that, it, that that will be sent to. The other is the from, and the other is like the reply to, which you've got much more visibility of, um, but they're not necessarily what are what are used to for for emails coming back in, like out of office emails and that sort of thing. Um, so the bounce addresses, um, one sent by Civi Mail, will have like something that sort of it looks mostly gibberish before the at symbol. Um, I have a load of codes, and those codes will uniquely identify the contact that that the email was sent to. Um, and then after the at symbol, it will have um, it will have a domain, um, which might be your domain, or it might be a special email domain uh, subdomain of yours usually um, that you've that you've set up for this purpose. So. In order to get those to come, in order to get all the email that's sent to any of those sort of addresses to come into one inbox, um, you you need um, um, sorry, it's you can't do it with a Gmail account, like as far as I'm aware, anyway. Um, in the, because what you need is you need something that's going to say, I will receive all email that is sent to bounces.mydomain.org, for example. Um, and that system that says I will accept all those emails. Um, so on some of my servers, for example, um, I use the servers, I use the servers domain um, for my client, um, and that will listen for email sent and anything at that domain. And when it comes in, it puts it in a it puts it in a in a mailbox that Civi can access. So it puts it, it's a it's a real file on the on the server itself. It, and it's sitting in a in a directory in a folder. Um, and then you can configure Civi to go to that folder to fetch fetch new mail. Um, and it will then process process that stuff. Um, if you use a third-party SMTP service to send your mail, they might offer, um, and usually they will take over that domain part. Um, so bounces will come back to them first. Um, they might offer a way to forward those bounced emails onto a particular single email address, in which case you could use um, like a Google address or, or any other in email inbox that Civi is able to able to get access to, um, you configure you configure access to that in um, I think it's I think it's called mailer accounts somewhere in the um, in the in the menus. Um, um, yes, so so it depends. The answer is it depends. Um, if you if you're running your own if you're running your own stuff. So I use Exim as the um, um, to as the SMTP um, service on my self-hosted stuff, um, and I've so I've written configuration for that that uh, that that will that sort of catches everything that's sent to that domain and sticks it in a place where Civi can get to it. If you're using a third party. Um, your mileage will vary, as they say, and um, um, but hopefully the third party is doing most of the work for you in, in that instance, um, and and you might not actually need the bounce back emails. There's one other ex there's one one other exception to that, which is that um, um, I think it's Mac Mail um, is the only thing I know that uses this all the time but it there's a, another hidden email address in in the headers of emails that get sent out um for uh, for unsubscribes um and that can say and, and on i think it's on mac mail if you press there's a might maybe like a spam button or an unsubscribe button or something and when people click it it in the background it sends an email to that email address um, that can catch out the third parties sometimes because often that email address goes straight to your 
server and that's when that's when uh that's when you can be missing those um if you haven't got that set up so uh how hard is it if you're running your own smtp server um and you are not familiar with configuring smtp servers it's really hard um if you're using a third party um you need to worry about it far less and um um and it's probably uh, a little bit easier <laughs> does that who, who answers that question and does that answer give you any hope Nikki said it was me. Uh, right. Um, Nikki, does, I don't know where you're coming from with your with your setup, so I don't know if that was... Um, uh, I'll check with Barry later. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Shall I? I'll, uh, all right. <laughs> um, how do you prevent your emails from being rejected as spam? So when I try to explain this to my clients, I usually, um, th there's some basic stuff that you need to do to make sure that you're sending emails correctly. Um, if you use third party and you've got it set up right, you're probably doing it fine. If you're doing it yourself, um, and you know what you're doing, then you probably got it set up fine. And beyond that, the and, and you know not having those things set up right, you know not if you so your SPF records and your DKIM for authentication. If it, if that stuff's not set up right, then yes, it's your fault that it's going to spam. Um, uh, if um, if you've got that stuff set up right, uh, and it's going to and it's going it to spam then it it's 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 um yeah then then it's like the way i explain it is like it's their dog that's eating the eat, eating your mail like it's 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 in their control it's not we can't we can deliver it through the letterbox but if their dog chews it up um um then then that's that's beyond what beyond our, our responsibilities we, we can't do anything about that so the best that you can do in that situation really is to um is to after you've made sure that your end is is all technically correct um and you're not sending anything obviously spammy i mean if you are trying to sell viagra then this is going to be hard for you um no pun intended um then um you can ask people to put you in put you in their inbox in their uh, address book, um, and importantly, you can ask people to if they find it in spam to press the button that says this is not spam. And the reason that's important is because all of these are based on some sort of machine learning, and so the process of the actual user saying this isn't spam will will mean that your emails are highly unlikely to be classed as spam in the future. Um, but obviously, that doesn't work if all their emails go into spam and they don't see the email that says, please click, this is not spam. Um, so one way around that is that you capture the, you capture that from people at the point where they where they care the most. So if it's a newsletter sign up and they, they've chosen to sign up to your newsletter, um, you can put on the, you can put on whatever form that they use to sign up, you can put we will send you a welcome email. Um, please look for this welcome email. If you find it in spam, click not spam. Um, also, if you use double opt-in, um, where people have to um, confirm their membership to uh, a new, to signing up, um, then that's a that's a good thing because then people will be hunting for that email straight away. So um, uh, yeah, so that's that's the best way of doing that. The so that's that's going that's like in the email going to spam but um that's when it's going into a spam box that's different from this question actually though because the question says how do you prevent your emails from being rejected as spam 
So um, let me see if I've got a slide. Um, This one will do. Right, I'm going to share screen with the line button. Um, right, I hope that's big enough for people to to see. Um, I can't remember how to get rid of all the sidebar things on Inkscape, so um, bear with. Um, show hide dialogues. Oh no, that's the opposite of what I wanted to do. Um, anyway, um, so um, this is the this is the process. So you've got Civi, your SMTP, um, which will be your own one or the one that you the service you pay. Then it's got to arrive at the recipient domains SMTP server. So that's like Google's if it's Gmail or out, you know Microsoft's if it's Outlook or Live.com. Um, then I've put this other one in here um that's because it's quite often in corporate situations especially for email to get forwarded around quite a lot before it actually lands um thank you for the explaining smtp um yes and there's brilliant explanations and examples of things coming up in the chat um and then finally it's their inbox um and so it can bounce back at any of these stages. Um, if it bounces, if it bounces here between their SMTP and yours, um, then it's likely that this machine here doesn't trust this machine here. And it might be because it doesn't like the look of your email. Um, that's unlikely um, unless you are uh, you know, unless your content is spammy, it's unlikely that it's that. Um, but this is where this is where the first authentication test will will be done. So there's there's two there's two main authentication things um, for email. SPF stands for uh, Sender Protection Framework, I think. Um, somebody correct me in the chat if I've got that wrong. Um, um, and what that does is it's is it looks at you know I mentioned that return path address earlier, so it looks at which is normally hidden. You don't normally see the return path. It's one of the hidden headers in any emails. But if you look at the source of the emails, you'll see it. Um, so what SPF does is it it says, oh, I'm getting email from Sender Policy Framework. Thank you, Barry. So it says I'm I'm receiving this email from. Um, from a server with IP address 1.2.3.4. Um, is 1.2.3.4 allowed to send email from that domain? And to find the answer to that, it looks at the DNS records, over to somebody to spell out DNS, um, for the domain. Um, and th therein it will find, well, if you've got it set up right, then the, it, will, it, will, it will say these servers are allowed to send email with a return path of and the domain name. Um, so if that's not passing, then that that immediately looks dodgy, um, and that's a like that that means it's likely to be rejected. Um, the other method, common method of authentication is um, DKIM, um, which is Domain Keys Identified Mail, um, and um, that's a bit more complicated to explain, but basically instead of going on the return path, it goes on the from header. Um, so if the from header in your email is something at yourdomain.com, um, then the then your email will, uh, and if it's all set up properly, will have a cryptographic signature in the header, which guarantees that the rest, the, the content of that email was generated by your server or by a server that you trust. And so that cryptographic key can then be checked against the email that's being received. And if if it doesn't match, then um, then it looks dodgy and that's a cause for cause for rejection. But having said that, both of those things can 
can be correct and you can still be caught in this return loop here um, and that's going to be because um, somewhere here it, there is an anti-spam system that has decided that that you are a spammer or you or that it just doesn't want your mail today thank you very much as i said because the internet gets busy with spam at different times and, and their, their thresholds for considering spam um, change so um yes that's why it's hard <laughs> um because you're you're up against these um you're up against these ais these systems that are continually changing um so even if you've never spent, sent any spam yourself um you can get caught up, up in it also if your domain if your server has an ip address that's like a numeric address for the server on the internet of like one two three four and um it turns out that a spammer has hired the server that's at one two three five the sort of the next one along or somewhere in the neighborhood of some similar some a similar ip to yours you can get caught up in that so um so yeah so you can find that your server's ip is is on a on a on a block list and um you may need to find out who runs that block list and ask them to remove your your server from it or ask and it might be like yeah but we're blocking all of those ip addresses all of the ones that begin one two three um and then you can you know you you, you can say that's not fair i'm in the middle of that and i've never sent any spam and but it gets down to that negotiation level which is why it's like which is why it's hard um right uh, where's um oh, i've just lost the what did i do with that um google doc there it is um uh regular c bounces reported a syntax issue so this is in civi crm's mailing reports um and syntax is a cat civi crm takes bounce messages and tries to categorize them um it's hard to know if the email is inactive or not. Some of these recipients get the email. So why is it reported as a bounce syntax issue? For one organization, it seemed to be how their own auto replies were configured. Yes. Um, so CV, um, as I say, it categorizes bounce messages. So it will do things like, um, does the reply say, I'm on holiday? Does it say out of office? Does it say, vacation response things like this and if it if it if that matches it'll say oh this is probably in you know a vacation auto reply message and it will treat it as such um syntax i think is a fairly broad category might even be like a sort of catch-all category for for trouble sending your email um and um and it, it can be it, it i i think it can be from a from a, a, a rejection based on policy, as in, as in, their SNTP thing thinks that you're a spammer, um, or thinks that you're a spammer at the moment, or just doesn't want your email at the moment. But that can that can have long-lasting effects when it comes back to Civi, and Civi goes, oh, syn syntax issue. Um, I don't let I don't allow very many syntax issues before I put the email on hold, um, and then you can put it on hold, and then. Again, if you're not monitoring emails that get put on hold, um, you've got you've got problems um, because you'll never email that again. So I think that's I think because it's a broad category, I think that is the reason that um, that that you'll that that you'll get that, and some of the recipients will get through some other time. Oops, I just reorganised the text by trying to highlight it. Um, um does that make sense whoever asked that um i'll just move on um if a server that it, okay good thanks nikki um if a server ip address is in a range that's blocked oh yeah so this is the situation i was just mentioning um uh in a range that is blocked the only real option 
is the only real option to use a different SMTP service? Well, yes. So um, I'll say a little bit more on that, which is that you, so if you're paying an SMTP service um, like um, Elastic Email or SendGrid or one of those, um, then um, then you can go to them about it. You can say, oh, well, we're getting all these bounces. We're, you know, it turns out that your server, your your IP is is on um, on a on a block list. What are you going to do about it? And they will usually then um, try and get themselves removed from that block list because it's not just going to be affecting you. Um, yeah. Um, so I would say that if you are paying a service, go to that service first and complain to them, uh, and they may they may be able to do something about it. One of, one of the things that's important to know about these services is unless you're paying for a static IP, which is a, oh, hang on, is this what the next recently upgraded our send grid package so that we have a dedicated IP? Ah, right, okay, so yeah, this is, this is a really good, um, this is a really good uh, thing to talk about static IPs. Here we go, private or shared IPs. Right, so um, companies usually try to push you towards a private IP, um, which can which they charge a fortune for um, just because they can. Um, it's best to separate your bulk and your transactional emails um, and send them out from different IPs, but Civi can't do that. Um, but that is that is what's recommended. One IP means one basket for all your eggs. So if that IP gets block listed, you can't send email um, and until you've had that negotiation with the with the block list the, the uh, organizers. Um, all IP addresses are used goods. So this person who put in this the comment about they're getting great performance since get, moving to a dedicated IP. They obviously picked up a good one with a good, a good existing reputation. Um, if you get one with a bad reputation, um, then um, you, you, you wouldn't be so chuffed. Um, and um, it can be very difficult to sort of build up, build up reputation. Oh yeah, that's what I said next. Um, so uh, my, my general advice is that um, if you're sending a simple regular newsletter, then yeah, a private IP might suit. Um, but if you're sending, like a lot of my clients are, um, they're trying to change the world and they're trying to do that often with things like, um, that generate a lot of traffic at once, like petitions. And we want to say thank you to lots of people at once. So, you know, 300,000 people, 300,000 emails sent in a weekend, um, to lots of different people, all with the same content saying, hey, thanks very much for signing this or what have you. Um, now, email receivers don't like you to change your patterns because they all, they all, all these AIs, they're trying to work out what your pattern is so that if something suddenly spikes, they can think, oh, that's probably spam. Like, a, look, a spam has got there. They must have, they're now sending loads. Let's block them. Um, and, and that, is a big problem then because if you've got one IP address and your sending pattern is volatile, um, if it goes up and down quickly, then you're much more likely to get get blocked, and then all your email is blocked from 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 that, you know, for people from companies that subscribe to that block list's data. Um, so, you know, and, and a typical one is. The BT internet are very, very quick to block. I've I've had sites with sort of twenty percent or higher of BT internet addresses put on put on hold um, because they they just seem to have a very light trigger finger. Um, uh, Microsoft, uh, they they're renowned for doing similar, and of course they have they have a huge proportion of of all the all the email. Um, all the email accounts. So yes, these links here, uh, Postmark at uh, the the so Postmark is an SMTP service. Uh, it's not one I've used myself, but other people have said it's quite good. But I'm not here to recommend them or not. But they've done this very um, interesting blog about about whether 
whether an IP, whether paying for an IP is going to actually help you. Because if your email goes out on on a bunch of on a bunch of IPs, as as is usually the case, if you're not paying for a private IP, um, then um, you know Hotmail. Well, they'll be used to quite getting a hell of a lot of email from that I, from that IP, um, and so they're less likely to you're more likely to get away with volatile sending patterns. Um, but it is it is difficult. Uh, I've also put a link in here to um, an extension of mine called Refine Mailing, which lets you write an email to, like, say, your big newsletter, uh, get it get it written, ready to send, and then you can do a searches, um, and you can remove those. Um, you you can remove those uh, people from the mailing. Um, so you've got this. You got this is your mailing. You can search for a set of people. It gives you search results, which will with some overlap, and it can chop those people out of the original mailing and and make a brand new scheduled mailing uh, that's that's separate. This is useful for segmentation, where you want to slightly tweak the message to these people, but it's also useful for IP warm up. Um, so IP warm up is when you've got a new IP. Um, address if you suddenly send 100,000 emails to that out from the IP there's a high chance that you're going to get flagged as a spammer and um, uh, you don't want that um, so what you can do is you can you if you've got 100,000 emails to send out first of all try sending 100 so you'd use this select 100 emails send that mailing if that worked next day or yeah next day try sending 200 more Next day, try sending 500 and build it up like that. Um, and that's that's how to do IP warm up. And yes, it takes time. And no, there isn't a shortcut way to do it. Um, sounds like whoever put this question in the Google Doc uh, ended up with an IP with, with great reputation. And um, so lucky you, um, it doesn't always work that way. Um, uh, would you recommend running your own mail server or using a third-party service? Yeah, that's a. So, I used to run my own. Um, now I use a third-party service. Um, I tend to use um, Elastic Email, and or I'm using Mailgun. Yeah, that's right, Mailgun. Um, I've got. I think I've got. I've got. I think I've got some clients that. The where I I still run the run the service myself. Um, the reason that I started using third party service <clears throat> is because um, um, it's <laughs> um, to be honest, it's because it makes it their fault, not mine. <laughs> um, so if if they get on a block list, it's it's let it's not a headache for it's not not. A, you know, it's not a direct headache for me because um, I get quite worried when things aren't working and I feel to blame um, or responsible rather. So, um, so yeah, like I, I think I started using them at the time when Microsoft were particularly jumpy, and I was finding myself always in these endless con conversations with with Microsoft's spam department saying look i'm not a spammer all my mail is authenticated you can see that i'm not a spammer um and then ending up with situations where they're they're just saying yes well i can see that but we don't have any way yes microsoft hell so um i don't they they've actually emailed me saying we have no it's controlled by this thing called smart filter or something like that and they say we have no way to to let your email through, we have no way to control it. It's just AI driven, and that's that's that. So I sort of got a bit a bit sick of that because it's it's quite hard to explain to clients that yes, there's there's nothing you can do about this. We're just going to have to sit it out and wait. Um, and people don't understand that. They think it's they think it's the service the service's fault, whereas it's not. It's the recipient server's fault. It's Microsoft's fault, BT Internet's fault, etc. So um, that's one of the reasons that I started using them. Also, you can, when you get big mailings, it can be a lot speedier to use a third party service. Um, picking a third party service um, is not so easy. 
Um, I mentioned two um, uh, there. Um, elastic email, um, I would, I, they don't have good reputation, um, generally speaking. Um, it, again, it might, you might find elastic email with a private email, if it's a private IP address, could work quite well for you if you're lucky to get a good IP address. Um, their prices are, are great. Um, this is, this is, um, a thing that this is a spreadsheet red is expensive green is cheap um and i compared uh, several products um uh that was research done a while ago now um but it gives you an idea of uh, and the, the vertical axis is how many emails that you're sending so from ten thousand to two million um and you can see that elastic once you once you're sending a lot of email, really makes a lot of sense, price-wise. Um, uh, yes, so it's it's very cheap. But if you if you don't have if you're using their shared IPs, they have this system where they'll dynamically allocate you into a different IP pool, and they start you off with with a rubbish one. So when you join them, like you get you send your first mailing, and you get ten percent bounce backs, and you and you're like, why? Have I, 10% of my known good email list has just bounced like you know and it's because they're using poor quality poor reputation IP addresses and that's one of the catch 22s in that if it's a cheap service lots of marketers that aren't very ethical will be using that service um, to send send their email out from um, and that's gonna that's gonna affect you um, so I have found that I get better deliverability at the moment from from mailgun but um so i use mailgun on clients that send fewer emails um and um uh, and and it costs more um but yeah so they're the two that i use um but the other thing is the these prices are always changing um elastic email have gone up 20 percent since i started using them um i first started looking away from Mailgun when they suddenly said, oh, we're going to charge you $35 a month um, that we weren't charging you before. Um, and this, they can just do that at the drop of a hat, really. And you're left either facing trying to find a new a new product or a new provider and getting the integration with Zivi set up for that correctly, which is a pain, and then doing your IP warm up with the new provider. Um, or sucking up so um so that yeah that is um that is that is a challenge um yes um right um any any other questions um i just have a look oh yeah so i've got some other things to share if you've not if you're not asleep or bored um so i've got um yeah yeah i've got lots more to talk about if you want it <laughs> yes please <laughs> okay <laughs> but may, maybe not for too too much longer but yes we'll okay well, let me 10 have... minutes all right then yeah cool well um this is this is an interesting concept. Um, so when you're picking a third party provider for SMTP for sending your email, um, you're gonna need to, you're gonna need it to integrate with Civi CRM. Um, and just like that question earlier about the syntax bounces, um, third party mailing companies they also um, they also um, categorize the bounces. Um, and sometimes you get this mismatch of like round things in square holes and um where it, it makes it it makes it quite difficult um because you know what the categories don't match basically because everyone's free to categorize things in their own in their own ways um so that can be a problem so if you see categories are used i did sort of hint at this earlier but like so there's there's things like syntax and there's things like on holiday and there's things 
things like spam. These are all different categories of reasons for bounces. And Civi allows a certain number of bounces of a particular category before it puts the email on hold. So if it gets a single rejection because of spam, it puts the email on hold. Whereas a, a vacation reply, holiday message, you're allowed 30 of those, or a mailbox full is the other one. Um, you're allowed 30 of those to happen before before your email gets put on hold. Um, so the integrations need to need to deal with that, and and that's that's something you can't. Yeah, that's that's sort of a reality that you, you need to know. So uh, managed managed reputation. Um, some email service providers claim they all claim this in like a you know if you look at their website you'd think you'd be forgiven for believing that if you use their service all your emails going to land perfectly in the in an inbox and never be rejected and that ip reputation is going to be something you don't need to worry about anymore but um honestly like a lot of them don't do anything about it really until there's a fault and then they'll then they'll do what you know then they'll try and get in touch with the the recipient and what have you um but you have to be aware that like they're going to be managing their own reputation more than more than they care about you because you're probably not giving them that much money um but their whole business is being able to send emails so um you'll have seen this like if you've used mailchimp and um you you get a few bad emails and it's like oh you know you've got this many people saying that it was spam uh, and you'll get an email from them saying um you better buck your ideas up and stop sending spam otherwise we're just going to close your account and the reason is because they need they need to be able to send email they need people not to click spam to mailchimp email sent emails um because it's going to affect their other customers and therefore their business and so they can afford to lose one one customer um for their own reputation so uh yeah um there and i made this extension called the email union um which can allows you to compare across services um delivery rates it goes on the bounces so it yeah, here it is look um uh uh so once you've got it installed um it will tell you how what percentage of your emails in your crm are on hold and it will um, tell you how that compares with other users of the email service that you that you have told it that you use. So here, um, well, you won't be able to, you probably can't see that. It's all fuzzy, isn't it? Um, but it says this compares uh, with average two point two percent emails on hold for people using Elastic Email shared IP, um, and two point one percent across all providers. So actually 1.8 doesn't sound so bad now to have that many emails on hold. And then it breaks down how many of your emails are on hold from all these different different domains. So um, here we've got BT Internet, um, loads, loads of our addresses are on hold from, from them, um, Hotmail and all the Microsoft ones, et cetera. So you can sort of use this to have a have a look and see whether you think it's see whether you're getting similar things to what other people get that use the same service as you um, and you could use that to sort of maybe help help choose a better service um, but also you can identify problems like BT internet it's like oh no all of our emails going into a big black hole if it's at BT internet and you could try getting in touch with them or your provider and say i think you've got a problem sending to bt internet we've got these massive huge and you know 4.8 percent are on, are on hold that yeah um so that's a tool um it it, it uh, only really works if lots of people with civi install it and choose in the settings to share their data it's it's anonymous in that it's only sharing aggregate data like um domains and it only shares a domain if you've got over I can't remember if it's like a hundred or something or other um, emails sent to that domain. So if you know if somebody's got their own personal domain, it's not going to show up and get advertised everywhere. Um, and you can block certain domains from being reported as well. But it's only going to work if everybody chips in data for it. 
Um, what does the maximum line length exceeded mean? Um, um, yeah, um, not sure. I think that could either be that the email is not being encoded correctly, um, uh, which would be odd. Um, I've not seen that one. Um, oh, it's different between blocked and bounced. Great. Um, a bounce is when an email you send um, gets sent back to you. Um, and that might happen immediately, as in, uh, no, I'm not going to take your email, go away. Um, or it might happen after the, you know, it might happen two days later where they've said, yep, thank you, I'll take that take that email and I'll, I'll get on with delivering it. Um, and, um, and if, uh, and then later on they go, no, no, return to send. I don't, don't want that. So a bounce is just, a bounce is that it's, it's the email, some sort of message coming back to you saying, no, no, thanks. Don't want that. Um, block. Yeah. Well, hang on. What did you mean? Blocked and bounced. So, um both if you generally sorry yes if it, there isn't a difference between blocked and bounced bounced is the action of of sending an email or a new email back saying i've i've rejected you that email that you tried to send um blocked is is because you is the reason that the reason for the bounce um Microsoft went through a nasty phase where instead of bouncing emails that they didn't like, they just dropped them. So that was particularly unfair because the person sending the email didn't, according, you know, if you'd have looked in Civi, it would have said delivered. Um, but you talk to the recipient and they say, no, it's, I haven't got it and it's not in my spam either. Um, and when you follow it through, um, it, um, yeah, when you follow it through, it it just was because Microsoft were deciding just to drop that email. Um, so, um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, blocked and bounced. Blocked is sort of what's happening, the reason sort of thing, and bounced is is the message that they send back to tell you that they've that they've blocked it. Um, when I first read your question, I was thinking, um, I was thinking about an email being put on hold. Um, which is a civvy thing, which you can control because you can put it off hold as well. Um, but you, but that's not what you asked. So, <laughs> some flat mail just flagged some as blocked. Yes. So, um, so that's probably an IP reputation issue, um, where where they where they've tried to send tried to send email on your behalf and um, and it, it yeah it's, it's been 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 blocked. Um, so Mailjet will will send a bounce notification back to your CV, um, which might then record it as a syntax bounce or something like that, or a spam possibly. Um, yeah. Um, PHP Mail. Um, well, PHP Mail uses the PHP Mail doesn't. PHP Mail isn't an SMTP, as far as I'm aware, is not an. Uh, well, um, mail, Mailjet doesn't feed back to Civi. Um, yeah, it can do. I've I've written an extension that does that um, in the past. Um, so it's about it. It, it can do. Um, it's just so it's either not got the integration set up quite right, or or not. Yeah, it'll be something like that. Um, Dave says when you install, yeah, uh, PHP. Um, so PHP, the programming language that Civi's written in, um, comes with a mail command which will send an email. Um, that just uses the server's send mail command. Um, so if your server can send email, then that's how PHP sends mail. Um, and if your server is conf if your server's email is configured correctly, then it it will be doing SPF and it will be signing with DKIM as well. Um, so it's not necessarily a poor choice for that reason. 
Um, um, but it probably it probably won't perform as well as as a as a fast SMTP service might. Um, yes, uh, I'm sort of looking in three places at once, really, for things to say about. Um, uh, let me just quick scan over the things. Um, um, I mentioned a MailJet extension. Yeah, um, I, when I used MailJet, I didn't use it for very long. Um, and um, I can't remember what I did in terms of integration. Uh, it was several years ago. So um, it, yes, um, it, it, I certainly wouldn't say, oh, here's the link to the thing and it works brilliantly because things have probably moved on a bit since then. Um, if I recall though, at the time I used MailJet, my, MailJet, you could configure MailJet to send bounces back via a, to a to a particular bounce address, but as I say, sorry, it was, it was ages ago, and I, I should probably just fess up and say I don't know. Can't answer that one. Um, I've got a couple of mailing related extensions that I might mention if if there's no other burning questions. Um, there's an extension I made called Resend Mailing. Um, so this is where you can begin a previously sent mailing to new search results. It's sort of like one of those things where when you need to do it, you're like, oh, I can't believe that isn't in Civi, but it, it's not. So, um, and you can also immediately send a previous mailing to a single contact. Um, so if they weren't on a list, but on like your newsletter list, and you sent out a lovely newsletter and they were like, oh, can you just send that last newsletter because I didn't get it? Then um, normally the answer is no, I've got no way of sending that newsletter again really um, but with this extension you do and the other thing you can use it for is to send send uh, send something that you've sent out already to to the mailtester.com address that they will give you um, for testing its spamminess so if it say if you had a lot of bounces on a mailing um, and you wanted to try and work out why you might you might choose to do that just to check that, that that's not why. Um, uh, Mosaico message template. Um, if you use Mosaico, um, then um, it's useful to be able to use it to make message templates as well um, for automated emails like welcome emails and uh, and other such things. So that's an extension that will take your Mosaico templates, that they call them, and turn them into into Civi's normal message template. And put them in the same place so that they can be used as normal message templates. Message template tester provides a user interface um, for sending a message template to yourself for testing. Um, so that you can use that with this and then you can see the email that you get um, with all the tokens replaced and everything. Um, so it says, dear Rich. Um, message template tools, um, preview message templates and other features. Yes, uh, I'm less familiar with that. It's um, not one of mine, but it looks good. Uh, it's by MJW Consulting, Matt. Um, quickly, uh, another extension of mine, which SearchKit will one day make, uh, make use pointless, um, but for the time being, it plugs holes in Civi's search capabilities. Um, you can search for people who did or did not open or click particular mailings um, or mailings within a date range. Uh, so you can search for people who are unsubscribed. You can search for people who are in this group but not in that group, um, etc. Um, so you can do some really cool searches with this um, that you can't do in Civi without it at the minute, um, and even with. Even with the latest search kit, the stuff you can't do. Um, you can also find people, find contacts who have got an email on hold, and you can find contacts 
who for whom all their emails are on hold or just one email is on hold or you can find contacts that may have a whole bunch of emails but you just want to know whether there's one good email address for them um, so it, that's that does that mailing tracker um, mailing tracker tracks performance by day week month I hope um, this is quite this is this is quite useful. Um, so it, yeah, it gives you it gives you like a graph like this, where the grey backgroundy bit is how much you're sending, um, and then you've got bounce rates, open rates, click rates, and unsubscribe rates going on on the other axis, um, um, and a table listing all your mailings and the bounce rate and the click rate and the unsubscribe rates below, and it's kept up to date and it doesn't. Once you've initially populated it with data, which takes it a while to do number crunching, after that, it's really fast because it, it, it incrementally keeps itself up to date. You can also filter mailings by that will affect the graph and the table by a, by, a, by a name of the mailing or the subject. So if you get into the habit of, say you send a newsletter and you send lots of other piddly little uh, mailings, um, then it, if you like always tag your newsletters with the you know, hashtag newsletter or something in the internal name of the mailing, you could just put that in there and then you could see your newsletter performance. You could isolate newsletter performance over time. Um, or, you know, you could, yeah, if you've got some way to identify, if you run several campaigns and you, then you, you could see how your mailings um, perform over time on that, on that campaign. So that's quite a useful one. Um, and then I think finally, Chasse is a way to um, um, get people going through an automated email driven donor journey, or well, it doesn't have to be a donor journey, it could be any else, uh, you know, so it's like, send them this email, wait a week, send them this other email, wait two weeks, send them this other email, explain who you are, etc. Um, so um, that's not to do with email deliverability, but it's email related um, extension. So um, I think that must be definitely my 10 minutes up. Um, and um, oh, look, look, I even had a slide on what SPF was. Um, I still didn't spell it out there, so still grateful to Barry for doing that. Um, yes, any other questions? But unless there's any other questions, I wanted to say thank you to Rich for a brilliant talk about um, a very complex subject there and handling all of those questions. Thank you very much. Um, you're welcome. And um, I just want to apologize again for the shoddy start. Um, I just completely have to fess up that I had my head deep in something else and forgot all about it. <laughs> so sorry about that. Uh, but I hope you hope somebody got something useful out of it. No, I, th I thought that was brilliant. And thank you for, sorry for throwing you in it at the beginning as well. No, not um, at all. Not, not at all. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to turn the recording off now. Um, yeah. So if, if um, people want, they can turn their um, videos back on or just take a second to, for the recording to come off. Mm -hmm. uh,